Greetings, students. It's Mr. Torgerson. Today I intend to discuss practice test 4 3. Let's begin. Question 1 Pythagorean theorem. We're going to take the two legs squared, add them together. We're going to compare that with the hypotenuse squared. We're going to see if it's equal, less than, or greater than in value. So we are questioning whether it's equal, less than, or greater than in value. So 9 squared is 81. 13 squared is 169, and 12 squared is 144. So does 81 and 169, or 144, equal 169? Well, no. 81 and 144 is, in fact, 225. So I can take the calculator out here, and I can take 81 plus 144. That is, yeah, 225. So this is not a right triangle. It is less than in value. The two sides are greater than in value than the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is smaller when it's squared than the two sides. In other words, this is an acute triangle. To change this into an obtuse triangle, well, I would change that 12 into something smaller than a 10. So, for example, if that 12 was a 9, this would be an obtuse triangle because 81 and 81 is 162. To change it into a right triangle, well, I would have to change that um, 13 into a 15 because 15 squared is 225. If I take 15 and squared, I get 225. Not uh, that number squared, but 15 squared. <laughs> Moving along. The ratio of the area, so this is now an area ratio. Last week it was a side length ratio of two similar triangles is 25 to 100. So now I'm going to square root this rather than square it because it's a area ratio. I'm square rooting to get the side length ratio. So this is 5 to 10. Again, the side ratio is the square root of the area ratio, or you can say this backwards, the area ratio is the square of the side ratio. Question three, Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus 10 squared will be equivalent in value to 14 squared. So uh, 10 squared is 100. X squared plus 100. 14 squared is 196. I am subtracting here because they're on opposite sides of the equation. So x squared is equal in value to 96. So I'm looking for the square root of 96. Again, this is a reduction of roots problems. So I have four different options here. Well, obviously, it's not 2 because it's not 4. Square root of 4 would be 2. So I'm looking at this option right here. Is 196 16 times 6? Well, yes. 16 by 6 is 196. So uh, this reduces by doing a square root of 16 times a square root of 6. And it becomes 4 root 6. The square root of 16 is 4. Next question. Similar triangles. So this length here, FH, FH goes with FD. So I'm going to put this triangle on the top, 2x plus 1 and 104. 28x plus 1. And the 104 on the top of a ratio. And this FH goes with FD. So this 28x plus 1 goes with 39. So underneath, this 28x plus 1 is the 39 because they go together. They're not equivalent in value, but they are related in value because they're similar triangles. And the 24 will go underneath the 104. Again, the process here, the procedure here to get this value out is to take 104 and divide it by 24 and to see what number that makes. Well, it's a decimal number, but when I times it by 39, let's see if it becomes an integer. Well, it does. So I can do this cross multiplication, 39 times 104 divided by 24, and I can get 169 here. 28x plus 1 is equal to 169. Subtracting 1 from 169 yields 168. And dividing 168 by 28, well, that's equivalent to the value to 6. x is 6 here. There's various methods here to, to decrease the amount of work and effort that you have to use to get this question. Question 5, Pythagorean Theorem. It doesn't say to use the Pythagorean Theorem, but if that segment is, in fact, tangent, 
it will be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now the issue here is the eight is not the entire side length. The eight is labeled as just this radius portion. So the entire side length here is in fact eight plus eight. There's another eight there that's missing. It's not drawn on the picture. So pay attention now, the picture's drawn. If it's not drawn all the way through as a diameter, I'm gonna have to make it eight plus eight. So instead of doing just eight squared plus 12 squared here, I'm in fact gonna do, raise the camera here, 16 squared plus 12 squared. And I'm gonna compare that in value to 20 squared. Again, I'm asking if it's equal in value to 20 squared. So 16 squared is 196. That's sorry, 256. Then 12 squared, 144. 256 plus 144. 20 squared is like doing two squared. It's just putting two zeros at the end of it. So I'm comparing this to 400. Well, that is equal to 400. 256 and 144 does make 400 when they add together. So my answer here is yes. AB is tangent to the circle because A squared, excuse me, because this length squared, which we would actually call B, because it's across from angle B, and then plus this length squared, which we don't have a letter name for this angle here at the end, is in fact equal to the value of 20 squared. I can also do this as all together in the calculator, 16 squared plus 12 squared, and I can verify that's 400, and then I can look at 20 squared, that's also 400. All right, next item, tangent. So these two lines are tangent. So 2x plus 3 will be equivalent in value to x plus 15. I'm put a line here to separate these two. Taking x from 2x yields just an x. And taking 3 from 15 yields a 12. X is equivalent in value to 12 here. Again, those lines are tangent to the circle. And uh, the way I can tell they're tangent, besides being me telling you right now that they're tangent, the way I can tell they're tangent is being told in the question they're tangent. I did take off the uh, instructions here that said they're tangent. I'm going to add them back in on the test. So we'll see on the test that the segments are tangent here. Next question, question seven. And uh, I wouldn't work. I wouldn't confuse you on question six by drawing segments that weren't. If they appear to be tangent, they are tangent segments. Uh, question seven: Cosine should be adjacent to hypotenuse ratio. Adjacent to hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse is always the longest side, so 29 is the longest. So if you're missing the hypotenuse, the bottom of this ratio each week, the hypotenuse is the longest side every single week of the triangle. Just take the longest side, put it on the bottom of the ratio if I'm asking for sine or cosine. And then the adjacent side from the perspective of Z, there's Z. Adjacent to the Z is 21 because opposite from the Z is across the triangle. 20 would be opposite, it's across the triangle. 21 is adjacent, it's it's next to the Z, or adjacent. So 21 to 29 is the adjacent to hypotenuse ratio here. All right, next one, arc, uh, arc length. So the entire circle here is two pi r, the circumference or the perimeter of the circle, two pi times 16. The entire circumference is 32 pi, but I'm not looking for the entire circumference, I'm only looking for 270 degrees of the circumference. So I'm going to modify this 32 pi by timesing it by by 270 out of 360 because I'm not looking at the entire circle but just 270 degrees of a full circle which is 360. All right so again there's some reduction that can happen here there's some reduction that can happen here by hand to get the finished answer out of 24. I am going to use a calculator so I don't know why you wish to, wouldn't just do 32. And you can put this in terms of pi for the exact answer, or you can multiply it out and give me a decimal approximate. Let's just put it to the decimal approximate. 32 pi times 270 out of 360. This is about 75 feet. Approximately 75 feet in its length. It's exactly 24 pi feet, if I left it in terms of pi. All right, next question, surface area. I need the area of the base. So the base on a cylinder is a circle. This circle has a radius of five. So pi 
times five squared. 25 pi is the base here. And again, you can use a decimal approximate, 25 pi. If I were to type it in a calculator, 25 pi would be approximate in value to 78, seven and a half or 79 about. The next thing I need here, well, I should identify the perimeter of the base to get the lateral area because the lateral area is the perimeter times the height. So this will be the perimeter times the height, or nine timesing by two pi r. Two pi times five, the perimeter of the base times the height. And again, I can use a decimal approximate here, or I can get the exact value, 10 times nine is 90 pi. And to get the surface area of a cylinder, I take the lateral area plus two times the base area, or two times the base area plus the lateral area. You can do either order. So two times 25 pi plus the lateral area, 90 pi. So that is exactly in value 50 plus 90, 140 pi, or approximately in value. And again, I will take the approximate values if you prefer to use the approximate values. 439.98.82, or about 440 square miles. Either answer will be accepted. So again, for a cylinder, we make a cylinder by doing two circles, top and bottom, two bases, plus a rectangle wrapped around those two circles, which is this lateral area the perimeter of the circle times the height, the perimeter of the circle being the length of the rectangle. All right, next item, the base of this, again, for a rectangular prism, you can actually call it any of the six sides of the base, but I'm gonna go with the what appears to be the bottom of the diagram, which is nine by nine, the square on the bottom, or in other words, 81, would be the area of the base here, 81 square centimeters. And again, the lateral area for a prism is the height of the prism, which in this case, since I'm using nine by nine as my base, the height is two times the perimeter of said prism. So the perimeter of this rectangle is nine, well, it's a, re a rect square actually, plus itself four times. So the perimeter of the rectangle there is 36 in value. Again, that's nine plus itself four times or nine by four because it's a square base. So anyways, my lateral area is equivalent in value to two times 36, 72 square centimeters. And again, for my surface area, because I've got a top and a bottom here for this prism, all prisms have a top and a bottom. We take two of the bases, two of the 81s plus the lateral area of 72. So uh, 2 times 81 is 162. When I add 72 to that, I get 234 square centimeters. All right, so I intend to make each of these ones on the front worth five points each. <clears throat> so there will be uh, 50 points in value on the front questions. I will give some partial points here for some of the questions that uh, you have work on. For some of the questions, there will not be partial points assigned as there is not much work that can be shown, like number seven, unless you get like half of it right, like the bottom or the top. Anyways, moving along to the back page, let me give, give me a second here to tape it together. Okay, and we're back. So volume of a pyramid. The volume of a pyramid, again, because it's not a prism, it's not base times height, but it's a third of the corresponding base times the height. One third of the base times the height. Well, I don't have the base yet, so let's hold off on putting that number there. But I do have the height of eight. And again, I'm not gonna try to confuse you by giving you a slant height here. This is the height we're supposed to use for a pyramid, the vertical height when we're doing volume. 
The base here is square in, net, in nature, in nature, square on this diagram. So the base here is 7 by 7. In other words, the base is 49 square kilometers. So a third of 49 times pi 8. Again, I'll take an exact answer here. I'll take a decimal approximate. So a third of 49 by 8 would be about 130.6 and 6 repeating. In other words, 130 and a third would be the exact value. Two thirds, sorry. And I can get that again. 49 times 8 divided by 3. Or I can do 1 divided by 3 times by 49 times by 8. Anyways, approximately 131 cubic kilometers. And again, you can do the exact value as well here, which would be 130.6, 130 and tenths repeating cubic kilometers. And again, this is cubic units, unlike surface area, because it's a measurement of capacity, not a measurement of how much material it takes to make the pyramid. All right, next one is a prism. Again, prisms should have top and bottom. So when we're talking about the base of a prism, we're talking about the top and the bottom of the prism, which is the same shape. So this prism is triangular, not rectangular. The top and the bottom are the two triangles, in which case, in this case, they look like they're the front and the back. So when I'm talking about volume being base times height here, well, I don't know the base here, but I do know the height. The height here is this number six. This is the height, not the five, the three, or the four, because the six is the connection between the two triangles, the front and the back, or the top and the, the front and the back, or what we would call the top and the bottom the basis. So this has to be six, this number here. Next thing, the area of a triangle should be half of the length times the width, half of a corresponding square or rectangle in this case. This five is the diagonal of the triangle. The length and the width are always perpendicular. So three by four is the length and the width on this triangle, half of three by four. Well, half of three by four is in fact six as well. So for my volume, I'm doing 6 by 6, which is 36 cubic kilometers in terms of my volume. Again, with the triangular prisms, if they have a triangle and it's a prism, not a pyramid, if they have a triangle and it's a prism, then it's a triangular prism, and you should not be doing length by width to get the area, you should do half of the length by the width to get the area of the base when you're doing these. All right, next question, area of a polygon. Area of a polygon, we're talking about a general polygon, not a square or a rectangle. Area of a polygon should be half of the apothem times the perimeter. So the apothem again is labeled, it's 10 in this case, so half of 10, which is five, times by 8.3, or times by eight and three tenths. So half of 10, I should just wrote the 10 there instead of a five, because it's half of 10, which is five. So five times by eight and three tenths, which is in fact equal in value to <clears throat> two, one half times 10 times 8.3, 41.5. Now I've forgotten something. Well, I said perimeter. I only used 8.3 here. That's only one of the sides. So what should I also multiply this by to get the actual perimeter? I did half of 10 times by 8.3. There should be another thing I multiply by. I should multiply by the number of sides. Because the perimeter is not 8.3, it's 8.3, and there's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's an octagon, 8 sides. So I should take that 41.5, and I should times that by 8 to get the actual perimeter, which is 332 in value. And again, there's no units on this question. If there was units, it would be square units, square feet, square meters, square whatever. All right, next question, factoring. So I'm breaking down the 72 to make 18. 
72 to make 18. So some of you are thinking with the 72, well, why not just use 9 and 8? Well, 9 plus 8. Is 9 plus 8 actually equal to 18? No. 9 plus 8 is actually equal to 17. 9 plus 8 is actually not the proper factoring here. So if that was a 17x, I would use 9 and 8. So what are the other possibilities here? Well, I'm thinking to myself, 2 and 36 maybe? Well, no, because that makes 38. Oh, I know, 12 and 6. 12 and 6. That multiplies to 72, and it adds to make 18. So this is x plus 12 and x plus 6. Again, you have to get the proper factoring set, not any factor set, the proper factoring set for the question. It has to add to make the middle number and multiply to make the ending number. And again, this is because A is 1. When A is not 1, we do have to do the more in-depth approach, which I'm, we're going to start throwing in on the next couple weeks test once again. All right, find the measure of the arcs. Any circle, again, adds to 360. So this entire circle makes 360. So if I'm asking you for WTV, I'm asking you to add the lengths from w, the angles from W to T, from T to U, and from U to V. Well, these are both labeled with 90s, and this one's a 115, so everything is labeled here. 90 degrees plus 115 degrees plus 90 degrees. In other words, the arc angle, or the angle measurement, the central angle, for this arc is 90 plus 90 plus 115, which is in fact equal to 295 degrees. On the next picture, everything's not labeled, but again, a half of a circle is 180. So I to K in either direction is 180. So in other words, if this is 130, these missing measurements, these little measurements are both 50s. These are both 50. And this one is also 130. This is equivalent to this. And this is equivalent to this. And it adds up to 360 total. So, I, J, L. I to J to L. So, I to J to L. Notice I didn't have K there in the question because it has, goes through K, but it doesn't state that it goes through K in the original thing because it's implied. Because if I'm going from I to J and then to L, I'm not going to go from I to J and then backwards to L. I'm going from I to J and then forwards to L, although it wouldn't matter because you would have the same angle measurement because that's, in fact, a diameter measurement. So anyways, I take 50 plus 130 plus another 50, which is equal to 230 degrees in value. All right, next question. Inscribed angles. The inscribed angle is half of the corresponding arc angle, or the arc angle is double the corresponding inscribed angle. So I have these backwards from each other. Now on the test, they may be switched around on your version of the test. So I may have this one here and this one here, and then the picture might look slightly different. It might not have this segment drawn here, YZ, or this segment drawn here, EG. But this angle inside, on the perimeter of the circle, is half of the corresponding angle outside on the, it's not an edge, but the perimeter of the circle. So if I'm looking at this 58 and I want to get this angle here from Y to Z, this angle from Y to Z will be double the value of 58. So I am doubling the 58 to get that angle. The answer here is option Option C, 58 times 2, is 116 degrees. <clears throat> and this one is going backwards. So if I'm looking at this angle here, this angle here is 106. So this corresponds to the 106. This angle outside around the perimeter of the circle, this arc angle, the inscribed angle would be half of 106. 106 divided by 2. So it's either cutting in half or doubling in value. The inscribed angle is half of the corresponding arc angle. The arc angle is double the corresponding inscribed angle. All right, this one, secants. Well, secants and tangent angles. Let's secants. Uh, question 20 is actually easier this, of this group. This is the same picture as actually question 
18, question 19. That's a, st that's a tangent line with an angle that's inscribed, actually. So if this angle is 170 here, I can cut it in half to get this question mark angle. And again, these questions may be switched on the test, so this will be the easier of the two questions. 85 degrees. Now this question, this is asking for an average angle. So if I'm looking at that 181, it will be the average, uh, the 51, will be the average of this angle and the 181 <clears throat> in terms of its value. Actually, I mean, we're going to have to look this one up. I think I've forgotten this one a little bit. What I was supposed to do. It's actually subtracted. We're supposed to subtract those two given angles and then divide them by two because it's a tangent, not a secant. I was thinking the secant angle where we would do the uh, add addition and divide it by two. But no, this one is the uh, subtraction dividing by two. So do keep it in mind. There's There's... Various separate pictures here that we did in class with these angle relationships. And perhaps it's worth my time to go over the other ones with you, since I might put them on the future exams, the other ones here. But um, we're actually uh, subtracting and dividing by two here to get the value of the angle desired here. So 181 minus 51 is 130, and 130 divided by two is 65. 65 degrees. And just to show you what one I was thinking of here with this question, I was thinking of this, the uh, the secant angles. I was thinking of the one with the circle where we have the um, left and right labeled, and I'm asking for the angle inside. So like if I have this one here is 140, and this one here is 100, and I put the question mark inside here. I would add and divide by 2 here to get the average value where it's actually a secant angles. So that question mark is 120 on here. And then there's other options here that we did in class as well with um, two, tangent, uh, two tangent angles and um, what else was there? There was also or two, tangent, uh, two tangent lines, sorry, is what I meant to say. And then there was the secant lines inside where they touched the circle twice. With the secant lines, we also subtracted. And the tangent lines, we also subtracted and divided by 2. So this was the only one where we added and divided by 2, where we did the, um, the chords inside of the circle, the two chords inside the circle. Anyways, hopefully this was helpful. And uh, hopefully you do well on the tests this Friday.